Construction on the Dayton Arcade started in 1902, at the peak of Dayton's prosperity. But this was no penny arcade. The construction costs came to around $2 million, even back then. Actually, the name arcade refers to the long, wide corridor with shops on each side and a glass ceiling above. But the most recognizable and unique feature of Dayton's arcade is actually the glass-domed rotunda to its rear. Well, historically, the arcade was built as a farmer's market, and it was a place where people would bring their produce, their fruits and vegetables, their poultry, their meat, uh, and then eventually, rather than just tables with the produce, why it worked out into little booths and things of that nature. And so it really was the marketplace of Dayton. It was sort of preceded Kroger's in the supermarkets that we now know in town. It was the downtown place to do your shopping. Shortly after the arcade and the rotunda were built, three other structures were added around it. A 4th Street apartment building, a similar apartment building facing 3rd Street, and the 11-story commercial building at the corner of 4th and Ludlow. Together with the arcade, whose facade was based on a Flemish guild hall, and the Renaissance Revival Rotunda, these five structures formed an architectural gem at the heart of downtown Dayton. The upper floors overlook the glass ceiling of the arcade walkway, and so those were always apartments, efficiencies uh, used for people that worked in the arcade or in other retail businesses or offices around the downtown area. All five buildings are on the National Register of Historic Places. The arcade's first 50 years were busy and prosperous ones, with its apartment space, its office space, its retail and its public spaces, the arcade was one of the original mixed-use developments. But starting around the 1950s, suburban shopping malls began to take their toll. The arcade was still a hub for downtown workers during the day, but fewer and fewer people traveled there to do their shopping. The arcade complex limped along until the late 70s, when a massive renovation was undertaken to restore the fading beauty. The apartment tenants were evicted and those areas closed but the arcade reopened as a modernized mall with a fast food court, a popular restaurant, and many retailers. Uh, by 1980, it had reopened as a grand mall in downtown Dayton, and it was written up nationally as a showcase of what could be done in inner city with a grand group of buildings. People came from everywhere, and it was very popular, but when the debt was so heavy on the place and it couldn't be paid off, and the crowds just were never large enough, even though at times in the space that we're standing, there were thousands of people coming through daily and shopping in the shops, but there was just so much debt on the place. But it survived 10 years, and then it started to erode very quickly. And of course, you know, when the banks don't get their money back, what they do is they write it off and they shut it down. The revamped arcade was officially closed after one last holiday extravaganza in 1991 but the decorations were never taken down, lending the empty building an atmosphere of perpetual Christmas time. Since it closed, it's had a reasonable amount of, not maintenance, but a certain amount of preventative work done from 1990 through maybe about 2000, 2001. Uh, after that, the building simply has not had heat in it, and that usually is the, the last step before the building completely deteriorates. Uh, things begin to swell and shrink and crack, and, and as, as you can see, moisture takes over and, and uh, the building begins to deteriorate much more rapidly. So that's the stage we're in today. But the arcade had more than just structural problems. Liens had been placed on the property for back taxes, and the building had acquired a reputation as a money pit, which meant no one was interested in getting involved to save it. I encountered the current owner, Tony Staub of Brownfield Charities. He says, oh, I think it's going to be demolished. He said, nobody's working with me. I said, in the city? No. The county? No. Developers? No, nobody. So we started Friends to Save the Arcade, and we started with public meetings at the public library. We set up a website. And uh, we went to the media and we got hundreds of volunteers coming out of the woodwork who wanted to know what they could do to help. So we got them busy stuffing envelopes and getting the word out that we were going to really save this place grassroots style. Friends to Save the Arcade contacted Bob Schiffler, a downtown developer who has recently restored several other historic downtown properties. 
One of the dilemmas with a, a space like this is that because it's set empty so long, aside from code changes, the, just the sheer deterioration of the property is going to require very extensive rethinking and remodeling of the space. Many of the spaces will have to be completely gutted and redeveloped because in many cases, the original usage doesn't conform with the requirements today in terms of the amount of space somebody would want if it was to be used for housing. So there's uh, a need to be very selective in the design process and in the development process to be sure that the reuse doesn't tread too heavily upon the historic nature of the building, but at the same time makes the reuse economically successful. We've had extensive conversations with developers interested in doing uh, a boutique hotel in the upper floors of the arcade. Uh, we have talked to many people that have interest in doing office space in the arcade. We have developers that are interested in doing the housing space. So there, there's a lot of interest. There are a lot of loose pieces. Most of the pieces are beginning to line up, but there are still significant amount of due diligence that has to occur because for one thing, even if everybody agrees, it still has to make economic sense. It's not simply something that can be funded as a, another public project. It has to be able to support itself. At the moment, nobody's signed anything. Uh, at the moment, we're simply in a discussion stage. Nothing is a done deal yet, but that's not the point to their arcade supporters. The point is that the mistakes of the past are behind them, and the future finally seems bright. What's important is that there is a core of people moving into this area, back into downtown Dayton. They're, they're leaving the suburbs and they're coming downtown because uh, of the convenience, because they like the, uh, maybe it's a pioneering spirit some of them have, but people didn't have a chance to really, you know, enjoy the architecture and, and really uh, watch the, the different lighting at different times during the day, how that plays out in the rotunda and all. So we'll bring it back.